It's Sports Center right now. Nabil Kareem with you. The NFL will not discipline Tyree Kill. The Chiefs wide receiver was accused of physically abusing his ex fiance and three year old son. Hill had an eight hour meeting with the league on June 26. They investigated the matter and came down with the decision today. Here's what they had to say in a statement. In conducting our investigation, we have taken great care to ensure that we do not interfere with the county's proceedings or compromise the privacy or welfare of the child in any way. The information developed in the court proceeding is confidential and has not been shared with us. And the court has sealed all law enforcement records. Local law enforcement authorities have publicly advised that the available evidence does not permit them to determine who caused the child's injuries. Similarly, based on the evidence presently available, the NFL cannot conclude that Mr. Hill violated the personal conduct policy. Accordingly, he may attend Kansas City's training camp and participate in all club activities. Saquon Barkley is getting set for his second season in the NFL. It's going to be hard to top what he did last year, rushing for just over 1,300 yards and 11 touchdowns. He's also got sticky fingers, too, racking up over 700 yards receiving en route to winning Offensive Rookie of the Year. But the 22-year-old, he's already thinking big picture. I think he'll be a lot better, and not just by stats. Um, you know, I think that's where, you know, a lot of people, you know, get confused. It's, for me, it's not about stats, you know. I look at, I break down like this. Why have 3,000 yards and go 5-11? and 11? What does that really mean? What did you really do for your team? Um, you know, I would love to have the, the most yards in the league and be Zeke and be girl and all that, and that's how I am, and that's how I operate. But at the end of the day, you know, I, I end up with the most all-purpose yards, and I didn't make, we didn't make it to the playoff. So I'd rather have 1,200 yards, 400, uh, 1,400 yards, and less touchdowns, and if Shep goes for 1,000, Evan goes for 1,000, and um, Golden Tate goes for 1,000, and we're 13-3 and three or 11-5 and five at the end of the year and competing for a championship. And you can see Jeff Darlington's full conversation with Saquon on SportsCenter coming up at noon Eastern on ESPN. Let's get you back to First Take. Nabil, thank you so much. Welcome back to First Take. We're coming to you live from above the river deck at Pier 17, presented to you by Chase. All right, we spoke a little bit earlier about the NFL not disciplining Tyreek Hill. We got the guys' reactions. We're going to touch that a little later, more so about Tyreek's impact on the field this coming season. All right, we now want to welcome in Damian Woody for our upcoming discussion. Max, we're going to talk about Saquon Barkley here, so let's start things off with you. We're talking about him reaching his full potential. Do you think that he's able to reach that full potential while a member of the New York Giants? Yes, I do. If he defines full potential as making the playoffs all the time over the next couple of years, then no. But I'm talking about as an individual, as a player. The answer is yes. I felt and feel Saquon Barkley is the greatest running back prospect who ever lived. Meaning, he has every single thing you want from the position. I wish he could throw the ball because he carries himself even like a franchise quarterback. Look at his introductory press conference to the team. Listen to the way he just said what he said. Not just the content, but the way he delivered it just then. Unselfish, team-oriented, a leader, humble, the whole thing. He's also 233 pounds with ridiculous breakaway speed. Can cut like he's Barry Sanders at 233. Can catch passes. You can line him up at receiver wherever you really want. Saquon Barkley is the total package. He did, he put those numbers together last year, by the way, in a pass-happy league against one of the worst, uh, behind one of the worst offensive lines in football. That's how, what he just did. But they improved the offensive line, um, and he has the kind of talent, guys, where it doesn't matter where you put him, on what team, in what offense. He's such a special home run hitting talent. And by the way, when he says getting better, it's not just something, you know, he touches the ball, he's liable to score it from anywhere on the field. But like even just things like running between the tackles, learning patience. He's so willing to learn. He's so eager to learn. He wants to get the best out of himself and, and so hungry for team success. He's a perfect player. As I said, I wish he could throw the ball, but there's no circumstance, barring injury, knock wood, that will stop him from realizing his full potential. Man, you know, it's, go ahead. Go ahead, Woody. Go ahead, Woody. You know, Saquon, here's, a, here's a, the crazy thing about Saquon's season last year. Le'Veon Bell, who's like the gold standard as far as mm. uh, scrimmage yardage running backs, He's the only one that's had a better season as far as scrimmage from scrimmage yards than Saquon Barkley, and that was back in 2014. Now, compare the two situations with Le'Veon Bell. He was with the Triple Bs. 
okay, with Big Ben, Antonio Big Brown. Brown. You know, <laughs> he was <laughs> with he was surrounded by a much better supporting cast than what uh, Saquon Barkley has in New York. So when I look at when we talk about reaching his full potential, that might not mean that might mean that his numbers come down some, but the team. He's surrounded by better talent. And to me, if you want to get the most out of Saquon Barkley, make sure the quarterback position is good. We don't know what Daniel Jones is going to bring to the table, but hitting on the quarterback, having better blockers up front in the offensive line, getting more players on defense, that's how you get the most out of Saquon Barkley because when you look at what he, the numbers he put up last year in his rookie year, you're not going to find many running backs that's going to put up those type of numbers in their career. So the best thing that the Giants can do is improve the personnel around Saquon Barkley, and that's how you're going to get the most out of him. I don't understand this from you guys. You guys bring up Barry Sanders, and everybody has. Why? Barry Sanders never had the line, never had the team. We don't question his talent. Well, what are we comparing to Barry? This is Barry with the top-end speed, with the strength to run you over if needed. Ultimately, I don't have faith that this man is going to ever be in a position to win a Super Bowl. And when you are arguably the most talented, and we grace you the most talented running back we have ever seen in Saquon Barkley, and you don't have an opportunity to compete for a Super Bowl at some point in your career, take a look at the front office. Why would you pass on Dwayne Haskins for Daniel Jones? Now, I don't want to judge Daniel Jones. I've been there as a player before. We don't know what he's going to bring to the table. Dwayne Haskins was a proven product. Tell me why Eli Manning is still on the roster. Eli was looked so uninterested in football. He had a point. He, he literally quit last season. He would not throw the ball past 40 yards, would he? Well, li listen, listen. We can't sit here and say that Dwayne Haskins is a proven product because he only played one year. Okay, so we don't know that for what we don't know that to be a fact Man. right now. But what I will say is Would you pass the on more, him? The more the more say it again. Would you pass on him if you were the Giants? Well, I felt like Dwayne Haskins was a better prospect than Daniel Jones, but that, that remains to be seen. I can't sit here and say that Dwayne Haskins is a, is a can't-miss guy because he only played one year at Ohio State. But so he, 50 touchdowns, eight interceptions, and he got better on, throughout he, the season. Max, he only, got, he only played 13 games last year. How can, we sit, how, can we sit, how can we sit here Yo. right now? How can anyone sit here right now and say Dwayne Haskins is a can't miss guy with that few snaps under his belt? Listen, I'm not saying Daniel Jones. He's going to the National Football League. I'm not saying Come on Haskins now. Let, let's, can't let's, miss. Let's be real here. I can't. I'm not saying Haskins is can't miss. I just hope Daniel Jones isn't <laughs> can't hit. That's my. That's my. Well, yeah. Listen, listen, <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen. We all got that's our questions about of. Daniel Jones. We we all have our questions about him. Yeah. Because listen, the one thing we talk about with Daniel Jones particularly as it relates to college, he didn't really elevate Duke. And that's what the really quarter, really good quarterbacks do. But my whole point, getting back to Saquon Barkley, is the more that the front office and Dave Gettleman surround him with better talent, not only offensively, but on the defensive side of the football, hey, Woody. that's how you maximize hey, a talent hey, like Woody. Saquon Barkley. Hey, Woody, better talent like Odell Beckham Jr.? <laughs> yeah, Odell? Well, I'll say this. No, Maybe that you figure things out? That's a bad trade because they just paid Odell, too. But they did get Zeitler back. That was Remember, that first trade that they made was part of the second trade. So Zeitler, who's a very good offensive lineman, very good offensive lineman, they've beefed up the line. And, and, and Will Hernandez should be better this year. The whole, he was a rookie, and he was already showing promise, and he was a high draft pick, one of the best offensive linemen in the previous draft. So the line should get better, and that's good for Saquon Barkley. But to your point, Ryan... You cannot expect uh, the running back position in today's game. You can't say that if they don't win a Super Bowl, it reflects poorly on the running back. It's just not that kind of league. It's a quarterback league. That's why they get paid three times what the running backs get paid. So you can be the greatest running back ever and never win a Super Bowl. Like Walter Payton, had he not been on the 85 Bears, is still the greatest athlete you ever saw. You know, Barry Sanders never won a Super Bowl. He's in the conversation. The running back, and that was back then nowadays the running back position has been devalued so so that's why i say i wish he could throw because saquon does every <laughs> single thing in the a, locker a room max. in the media a everything a and max. he still you may know, not win you know who got a squad couple super bowls and we we put them on a, we know who he is emmett smith and we yeah. always go back imagine barry sanders behind that line i don't want to say the same thing about saquon hold on ryan let's pump the brakes do you know what, the, what type of team those dallas cowboys were in the early 90s 
I mean, they were stacked on both sides of the ball. So let's not – as great as Emmitt Smith is or was, let's not just sit here and say, oh, Emmitt Smith just basically put the Cowboys on their back. That team was loaded. Or to the point – or to that point. No one calls Emmitt Smith the greatest running back ever. A lot of people call Barry Sanders that. That play into Saquon's success. Of course, Daniel Jones being one of those. But Saquon clearly on his way to greatness last season. Barkley became the third rookie of all time to reach 2,000 yards from scrimmage. That is the first since Edger and James in 1999. All right, we got much more debate to come right here on First Take. Kevin Durant is in the middle of his rehab. So will he actually be a better player when he returns from his devastating Achilles injury? One of the guys says yes. And Paul Feinbaum joins us to tell us whether Clemson has surpassed Alabama as the premier program in all of college football. Don't go 